Hi, just a quick little uh, blab video, even though it's not really a blab, I'm not ranting on about something, I just thought I'd uh, uh, show you something that I've got here. I, you've seen this uh, before, this is my uh, Wecom uh, 10K lab resistance uh, transfer standard, very expensive uh, custom handmade uh, resistance standard, and I'll uh, link it in uh, down below if you haven't uh, seen this, so thank you very much Wecom, they actually uh, sent this to me to use as a uh, lab standard here, and there's some uh, teardown photos as well. Anyway, I've just been um, having it run overnight. You'll notice I've got uh, four terminal resistance measurement here, so it's got a, a sense um, uh, terminal on it, of course, as all good uh, lab resistance standards will to compensate for the test leads. And so I just wanted to show you what I actually captured overnight here. You can see the data actually go... This is a graph of, uh, I've got uh, 75,000 samples. I'm actually uh, doing, um, it's sampling like every couple of every couple of seconds or something. There's 10 uh, power line uh, cycles in this thing. And you'll notice that it actually went right up there at the start, little dip and then up. And then that's, I think that's when I went home last night. And then I came in this morning and it had started going up. And then when it went down, back down like that, that's when I came in this morning. So I didn't turn on the aircon uh, here at all. So, but I did turn on the lights, of course. So, you know, maybe there's some heat generated from the lights or something like that. Something changed. I definitely came in this morning and then it started heading, drifting back down again. But uh, yeah, I haven't gone into all the details. This is not a, uh, you know, a, a, like a really controlled uh, scientific test. I just thought I'd leave it on overnight and. Uh, see what I got but as you can see it's bugger all it's uh, 10 if you can actually see that take a look at the scale there it's actually 10.0000 uh, so we're looking at uh, four decimal uh, places there and it basically doesn't change you know like I can't actually see the actual values on the scale here I'd have to uh, download the data to actually uh, extract the real data from it and I'm using my uh, Keithley uh, seven and a half digit multimeter here it's the best pretty much the best uh, uh, meter I have in the lab here and uh, you'll know that this is like the original uh, cow certificate with it and these are the uh, bloody Stupid tripod. I've got to get myself a new tripod. Doesn't stay still. Camera's too heavy. Um, this is the original uh, cow certificate. Its nominal value is uh, uh, 9.9999. So that four nines there, 228. And that's what's written on the back of it. It's its you know nominal stated value. And there's alpha and beta values if you know all about uh, that sort of jazz. But um, yeah, they actually measured this at um, uh, 5, 0.5 degree uh, temperature gradients. And as you can see, there's just four nines all the way through there so it doesn't change much so what we're seeing here up on the screen is clearly not a uh, a temperature drift of the resistance standard itself because it, it's better than that it does not drift by really or it shouldn't drift by that amount of uh, value but you know once again when you're trying to measure this sort of uh, this sort of precision everything comes into play you've got your temperature your uh, leads and your contacts and things like that um, you know low noise tellurium uh, copper contacts you know we can actually so you can see the sample noise in there I could actually turn on the filter in this thing and actually uh, get uh, that um, you know, and actually smooth out the signal, but I just put in the 10, I didn't put a filter in, just put in the 10 power line uh, cycle, so we do get a fair amount of noise there. Now I can actually go home, I won't, and that won't uh, kill the uh, data being sampled here, and it's, it's saying, it's uh, 10 point double O, oh, no, hang on, no, that was an old value, was it, or is it jumping around? Anyway, here we go, it's 9 point, yeah, yeah, okay, there we go, so I don't know what that anomaly was. 9.999970 and of course the uh, the value um, that's uh, supposed to be is 9.9999228 so you know I mean, we've got discrepancies here um, what that you know like is it I haven't actually checked if that's within uh, spec of the meter or not it most likely is um, would be my guess anyway we can go back to the graph here and you'll notice that uh, this uh, this little dip here was caused just before I started uh, shooting this, and um, I, I 
I didn't touch it. I didn't, I didn't physically touch it, but I was shuffling stuff around on the bottom bench here and maybe some vibration actually went through uh, shells here. They're held on with it like they're uh, supported by these metal things. And if you touch the table, of course, if you rock the table a bit, then that can, um, uh, you know, s send vibrations up through the uh, top table up here. So it's not the, not the best uh, environment to testing but anyway it's interesting i just thought i'd show you that but there you go so i'm not sure why i left last night um i did actually uh well this it would have geez no it actually got a bit cooler last night but i'm in the middle of a big building here so i didn't actually log the temperature with this thing which is you know uh, which is a mistake if you're trying to do this properly of course but i'm not i just ran it overnight to uh just, you know, to see what value it would uh, settle down to. So, um, looks like that's what it's, uh, that's what it's settled down to. So there is a bit of a, uh, discrepancy from the, uh, measured, uh, well, from the, uh, uh, calibration value of this thing. And it was, uh, done by the, uh, KCB, uh, mob in, uh, Germany, who's, you know, some big reputable, um, you know, uh, Cal House or something, KCB, DK, calibration, all that sort of jazz. And I think there's the actual uh, calibration certificate from uh, KCB. And, uh, yep, it's all in German. There we go. Oh, no, no, there we go. It's half in English. This calibration system documents the traceability to national standards, blah, 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 blah. And uh, anyway, this was one of the first units off that they actually made. Um, it's a new uh, line that they're making. So this is one of the first, uh, well, they're all handmade, but this was one of the very first units that they, that they actually built. Well, I'm pretty sure my meter is not good enough. You know, you really need a, uh, you know, an eight and a half digit, uh, class meter really. And if, if I left my aircon here, it, my aircon can actually, uh, control the room temperature to within, uh, plus minus half a degree, uh, C or thereabouts. I've actually got uh, some data on that uh, somewhere. So, you know, if I turn the aircon on, it does actually uh, regulate fairly well. But as you can see, I didn't have it turned on. I don't think I had the aircon on last night. I And th this is not a uh, warm up. The meter was already on for an hour or two before I started. So not actually sure. But anyway, I went home. So the aircon was already off. So I'm not, you know, entirely sure. What happened there? Yeah, something dropped overnight. So some characteristic of either the resistance standard or, or and or the um, meter itself uh, drifting. But yeah, we're really quite, you know, down into the precision uh, realm of things. And if you don't do it properly, yeah, and sort of eliminate all sorts of variables and everything else. But you can tell I uh, really haven't used this much. They've actually got a reading table in there. And you can actually, that gives you the uh, time and date stamp and the uh, absolute values in there. So can we just scroll that? So it started out at uh, 10.00005k. Uh, so at the minimum point there, roughly, it's uh, 9.999967 or thereabouts. So yeah, yeah, still not down around the uh, point, uh, uh, 228 that we're after. So we got 68 instead of uh, 28. So now if you take a look here at the uh, calibration data, uh, this uh, resistance standard actually, well, this particular one there, they might all be different because they're all handmade and hand selected resistors, everything else. This one actually has a slight negative temperature coefficient. What that means is that as the temperature increases here, say from uh, 20 degrees to 25 degrees, the resistance actually drops. You can see it point three, like 999, 9999362364331 29 so it it actually drops so for a 5 degree C range there that's a change of uh point or negative point double o double o two three ohms so uh or oh, k sorry so um yeah it's you know it's not a huge change and that's not nearly as big as what we're seeing on the screen here because if you look at the highest value we've got there at uh, at that point there, roughly, you know, we're looking at uh, point, uh, 10 point uh, 0.00034K. And if we go to the, uh, you know, the low point, point uh, 999969. And if we go back to our graph here, that's a uh, total difference of uh, point 0.00000. 
0.66. So just the temperature coefficient of the uh, reference uh, standard doesn't account for this. So there must be um, some drift in the meter as well. And of course you'd expect that. And I think this is actually, we've come back later. I've actually come back uh, from having some lunch and you'll notice that that's the dip we were at before. In fact, discovered that you can uh, pinch and zoom this thing, which is rather, uh, rather neat. So, but you can see, yeah, that's the, um, that's the, uh, that, that's where we were before. And since then, I think this is the point came back from lunch and then it started ramping up again. I turned the lights off when we went to uh, lunch and then we came back in. Once again, have not turned on the air con. Then it's going to continue to hover around here based on uh, the ambient temperature. So these are not just uh, temperature stability, but, you know, the physics to do with the reference and, you know, everything else uh, to do with that sort of stuff. Because, you know, you're talking about material science and, you know, of how the actual reference itself actually uh, ages and works, you know, and drifts and everything else. So, you know, even though you might read the data sheet uh, for this meter, for example, and it might say, you know, allow, I haven't read it, um, uh, but, you know, it might, say, might typically say, okay, allow it to warm up for an hour before it meets specs. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's not better performance beyond that uh, one hour figure. So, you know, it might need to stay on for a day. And that's what we might be seeing here. We might be seeing some sort of longer term characteristic. It'll still be within spec after an hour or whatever. Um, but, you know, we're, we're sort of we're possibly trying to measure like beyond that. We're trying to see data actually beyond the spec. It's fascinating stuff. Um, but yeah, to do this properly, we need really controlled conditions and you can separate things out. We can uh, try and determine which one's actually got the most uh, effect. Um, having the most effect here, is it the uh, meter itself? I think that's most likely. Is it the uh, resistance uh, standard? It's going to be, ultimately, it's going to be a combination of both, but how each one weighs. You can actually, you know, put one in a thermal chamber and one not, or, you know, and you can cycle them to see which one has the greatest effect and all that sort of stuff. But, yeah, um, I, I could do that. I've got a thermal chamber here. I could put the reference uh, standard in there and, you know, um, uh, use my uh, aircon as a secondary uh, uh, thermal chamber effectively because I can control that to within half a degrees and you can have fun like that and, you know, spend weeks and weeks and sometimes months and months gathering data like this. Now, I've come in the next day and look at this. We've uh, pretty much what we expected essentially from the drift of the reference uh, in with a, well, what we expected from a negative temperature uh, coefficient. Here's where I left off uh, the filming uh, yesterday and then we stayed, like, uh, stayed in the office a bit longer, got really warm here. I didn't, deliberately didn't turn the air con on, so it actually got up to 26 degrees in there. Now it's uh, about 24 and a half, so I got into 26 and then this is the roughly the point that I went home, obviously, and it's started to cool down just a little bit because I switched the lights off, obviously. I've got, you know, a fair few lights in here pumping out, you know, half a kilowatt or something, right? So, um, you know, and, and computers, you know, everything else that I've got uh, going during the day. And so I switched those off and obviously it's uh, cooled down a bit, only by like a degree and a half, but you can see that it's actually drifted back up in value like that. And I bet you now that I've... Uh, got the lights on and I'm back in for the day, we'll probably start to see it uh, drifting back down. But we didn't reach anywhere near that point that we got before. Although, um, I'm actually, I might turn the air con on now. What do you think? I turn the air con on. I normally have it to set to 22 or something. It is. So I'll turn it on just now and we'll see if it jumps back up. It, it, maybe it might get back up to the peak that we had before. That'd be an interesting experiment. Otherwise, I think we're just going to see it go back down and that's not hugely interesting. So I'll try that. Aircon on. And bam, look at that. Look at the huge big jump up there when I immediately turn the aircon off and it's gone to actually a higher value than initially over here. And you can see some oscillation in there. I'll zoom in a second, just like we saw over here, and I reckon that's got to be the cycling of the air conditioner in, I believe it's like five minutes on, five minutes off, or something nominally to uh, uh, keep this uh, room to temperature, although that varies depending on 
how much heat's being generated in here and you know all that sort of jazz but uh, if we can we zoom into that there we go we can see some oscillation look at, look, check it out there we go you can see the oscillation in there up down up down like that but you can see it progressively ramping up slowly so it hasn't actually um even though it's now 22 degrees in here by the way and before i um started it back here it was uh 26 degrees so i just turned the aircon on and uh, you can actually see some uh look some sort of i guess you call it undershoot there but uh it's really it it's absolutely amazing how it ramps up that quickly but then there's a slow rise like that it's almost like there's a a thermal dampening and this is what you'd expect of course in if it is the resistor which i don't think is the only thing going on here okay there's you know the resistor here's um a photo inside the uh thing and you can actually um see you know we've got a die cast uh, outer box here shouldn't actually tap that got a die cast outer box here plus an internal um uh, sponge which actually stops the uh stops the, you know vibration it dampens any vibration getting into the thing but there's an airspace in there and it takes time for outside temperature differences to make their way through to the resistor so that's you know uh, partially what we could actually be seeing here or some percentage aspect of it there's a slow ramping up it actually takes time for that resistor inside to reach thermal equi equilibrium to the temperature outside but let's actually um, take a quick look at the figures and see if this large change that we've got here this large change that we saw is actually just due to the resistor now, if you can see, we've actually jumped up to uh, over 10K again, 10.00036. And if we actually uh, go into the reading table, once again, we'll be able to uh, take a look here. Actually, I think that value there was uh, 26. Like, that was you know, that was the absolute highest temperature that we got in the lab. And I think it's, sorry, it just cooled down a little bit. So I won't take that one before there. I think it's a... Uh, for it's currently 22 degrees C here in the lab now and uh, according to the same uh, the same thermometer so not absolute I'm just using one of these uh, little you know crappy things but hey it, you know so we don't care about the absolute we care about the change in uh, temperature so I'm going to take that point there as uh, 26 and then go back to our uh, current value up there and get the difference see if it matches the data sheet for the resistor so we've got the uh, absolute values for this resistor from the calibration lab at 0.5 degrees C uh, temperature intervals here. And of course, they would have let it, you know, settle for like an hour or a couple of hours at each uh, temperature, etc. They'd be doing this in a proper thermal chamber using all the best available test leads and the best available test conditions, everything else. So we can be pretty confident in these unless the resistor is physically changed or physically damaged since you know the, since they actually did this but we can be pretty confident this is a hand selected hand age hand characterized resistor um you know i'm pretty confident in it and so these are the different values at 22 and 26 with a delta of 0.000196k let's round that to 0.0002 and this is what we actually measured on our meter here for the same four degrees C difference, we're getting, you know, roughly uh, 0.00800. So it is, this is actually four times greater change we're reading on the meter than the absolute value in the resistor. So assuming that the resistor is good, which is a pretty safe bet, the rest of that four times change must be coming from either the meter or Possibly, um, you know, it could be the um, the interconnects, of course. We could have uh, thermal EMF issues here, maybe with the test leads. These are, you know, uh, different metal matching, all that sort of stuff. But, you know, it's it's likely, most likely to be the uh, temperature characteristic of the Keithley meter. Now, if we have a look at the data sheet for this uh, Keithley DMM7510, then we can uh, see that the uh, the spec actually um, has a temperature coefficient to do with it. And it also depends on whether or not you've done auto calibration on this thing, which I have not. So I'm taking the table that 
has not had auto calibration done and the figures are uh, higher. And it's uh, basically on the 10K range, 2.5 ppm per degree C. But if you have a look at the uh, asterisk note for that, it actually says uh, these are apply outside of uh, plus minus 5 degrees, or uh, yeah, plus minus 5 degrees C about the temperature uh, the temperature it was calibrated at. So we're not outside that. So according to the data sheet, in theory, we shouldn't actually be applying in this. But because we're actually doing more metrology, metrology type stuff and actually measuring within the performance, you know, the spec performance of the unit, measuring, you know, some inherent uh, temperature changes, then we've got to take this thing, this sort of stuff into account. So let's just take the nominal figure that they've given here of 2.5 uh, ppm per degree C. That's uh, 0. 0.00025K per degree C, just to put it in the same sort of format as what we've got up here. And of course, that's, and we're talking, we're looking at a 4 degrees C temperature range here. So that's actually 0. 0.001. So you can see our difference here between our, our, what we expect from our resistor here and what we actually got on the meter um, was that uh, we were getting a 0. 0.0006 change from what we were expecting. So we're going from basically 0. 0.0002 to 0. 0.0008. So that's 0. 0.0006, you know, discrepancy that we're trying to account for here. And, you know, just according to that data sheet spec, you know, it's going to be actually be higher than that. So bingo, have we found the culprit? It's the Keithley meter actually drifting assuming of course that our resistor is you know hasn't you know it hasn't drifted or you know isn't uh faulty in some way and that it's as per the data sheet which is a pretty safe bet so we can easily account for the discrepancy that we're seeing here and on this meter by saying it's essentially the temperature coefficient of the reference inside this thing and that's what's causing um, all of these, that's what's causing this change. And of course, as I said, this actually didn't start out. I didn't start this video out to actually be a tutorial or whatever in how to, oop, no, in, you know, in how to do this, in how to, you know, measure a uh, precision resistor like this. Otherwise, I would have got out my thermal chamber and I would have, uh, I would have done it properly in uh, quote marks. But, um, oh, I can just expand it that way, can't I? Yeah, silly me. I'm not a pinch and zoom kind of guy. Oh, I guess all the young whippersnappers are with their modern shoe phones. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so it looks like um, the discrepancy we're seeing here is actually um, due to essentially, as I said, combination of both, but the dominant thing seems to be the Keithley meter. But hey, as I said, this is not a proper way of, you know, not a controlled experiment. Didn't start out as one, but it kind of turned into one. I was a bit... Um, interested in uh, in the results here. It was just a thing I did on a whim, but I think we need to, uh, I won't do it for this video, it'll have to be the next one definitely, but uh, we can put the resistor in the thermal chamber so it doesn't change and just have the leads coming out and then we can, you know, ramp the temperature up in the room or uh, do, we effectively have to do that because it's not like we can put this uh, Keithley meter inside my uh, temperature chamber because it generates too much heat. You really need a big, beefy um, thermal chamber to actually, uh, for a product that puts out 5, 10 watts or something um, of uh, radiant heat, you need a big thermal chamber to uh, uh, heat up the ambient. My little uh, toy thermal chamber can't do that, but it could certainly heat up the resistor box if you leave it in there uh, long enough to soak. So, yeah, might have to do that for a second video just to uh, see the difference, to see if we can actually get a smaller change in this. But, yeah, it's rather fascinating. So there you go, this turned, this was just going to be a simple second channel video, then I thought oh, I might do it as a blab, but then I thought mm, no, it's kind of, you know, turned into an interesting and rather lengthy and waffle type look at uh, just measuring a simple resistor standard like this with the, pretty much the best meter I've got here in the lab. So there you go, hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Catch you next time.